Golden Edge, presented by STN Sports Mobile from Station Casinos. What is up, hockey fans? This is the Golden Edge podcast coming at you live from City National Arena. I am Ben Goats, one of your Golden Knights Review Journal beat reporters with my colleague uh, Dave Shane and a very special guest. We have Golden Knights winger Riley Smith uh, joining us today. Riley, thanks so much for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, really appreciate it. So uh, first of all, uh, just how's it going right now? What's kind of the mood of the team? Because you guys are in a little bit of a slump. Yeah, we're not winning as many games as we'd like to. Um, like you said, a little bit of a slump right now, but we're, we're staying positive and uh, really trying to focus on our work ethic and our uh, and our defensive structure to, to get us out of this um, losing skid that we're in right now. Yeah, well, uh, obviously practice is a little bit of an optional today. One thing I noticed at the end, uh, you and Cody Glass were working on the uh, between the legs move scoring. Uh, are you trying to give the uh, rookie some tips on how to do that? I'm trying to pick up some things, actually. Uh, it seems like all the younger kids uh, coming into the league, they're they're so good with their hands and um, they've done so much skill development. So um, they're pretty good at those nifty little tricks around the net. Um, and it seems like there's goals being scored that way so uh kind of just a, a lighter thing to do at the end of practice um he's actually pretty good at it too so cody so uh he's teaching me some things so let's talk about just maybe a little bit on how you got into hockey obviously you come from a hockey family come from a hockey area around toronto kind of just naturally gravitated toward it absolutely uh there wasn't much else to do um you know i played hockey in the winter and uh lacrosse in the summer uh since i was about five but i had uh Two older brothers who both started playing hockey and skating when they were around three and four. Um, I started around the same time. Um, it was kind of just the natural thing to do in Toronto. It seemed like all the kids were playing uh, pretty early and, and getting into it. So it was something I enjoyed and it was a good way to, to you know, do something outside of school with my brothers. Yeah. Did you play with your brothers a lot growing up? Was there a lot of like in-house competition? There was a lot of in-house competition. There's no doubt about that. Um, so my two brothers, Brendan, he's two years older than me and Rory is four years older. So I never really played with them, um, on league teams or anything like that. I was uh, a little too young and a little too small. So, uh, I wasn't able to join, but at home we were, you know, always doing stuff and, uh, we were pretty competitive. So, you know, there's a lot of bloody noses and, and chip teeth around the house just from, you know, playing mini sticks and uh, stuff at home. So we were definitely a handful for my parents, but but they did a good job, uh, you know, putting up with us and all our nonsense at home. So as a Wisconsin grad, I certainly remember your brother from college. Was that kind of the influence on you in, in wanting to take that path? Uh, or was that maybe just the, the best choice for you, uh, Miami University? Uh, yeah, I don't think any of the OHL teams really wanted me. So, uh, really? yeah. yeah, so I had to, uh, wait it out a little bit, but, um, both my parents are educators, so they really instilled on, on that route for, for us. And, um, I think it was the right choice for me. I needed a little bit more time to develop physically. I was pretty small. I think I was, when I was drafted, I might've weighed 155 pounds or soaking wet too, probably. Uh, but it gave me an extra couple of years to, to play junior A in, uh, get a little bit bigger physically and uh, a little bit more time for skill development. So it ended up working out for me. I really enjoyed my time in Miami um, and having my brother, Brennan, who played at Wisconsin as a, as a sounding board going through that, that process was, was great. He's uh, obviously had a unbelievable career at Wisconsin. Um, it would have been nice to get to play against them. We were, we were close one year in the, the frozen four Um but Boston College beat us out in the semifinals and then beat him in the finals. So uh, that would have been fun. It would have been nice to have those bragging rights later in life. But uh, all in all, it was a great uh, choice for me to, to go to Miami and, and go the college route. And I think it was the same for my brother. Yeah, Brendan ended up playing hockey. Rory became a lacrosse player. It was the National Lacrosse League. Was there ever a decision point for you as to which brother you were going to follow or were you always hockey? Uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, it was a tough decision for me. Um, like I said, I was a smaller, uh, kid growing up and, um, when I was probably all the way up to 16 years old, I was probably better at lacrosse growing up. And that looked like that was the route that I was going to take until my grade, probably 10 or 11 years school. Um, 
because it didn't look like hockey was panning out for me. So uh, lacrosse was, uh, you know, it was a big part of my life. Like I said earlier, I played it every summer and, um, you know, I was pretty good at it. I really enjoyed do it, doing it. And I had my oldest brother who was, you know, a really good lacrosse player. So uh, it was a tough decision for me. Um, obviously, there's a lot more opportunity with hockey. So I, I decided to weed it out with lacrosse and um, it ended up working out because the next year I was able to to get a scholarship to, to Miami University and be able to play there. But it was uh, I think it helped me with my uh, hand-eye coordination, um, just being able to do both those sports all the way growing up. Yeah, so that being said, are we going to see a lacrosse style goal from you anytime soon, like the Hurricanes did? No, I can't. I can't pick up the puck. I can't even do that in practice. Like I said earlier, the uh, the young kids they're they're so good at all these nifty plays, and um, you know you don't really see those too many in games, but when they do pop out, they uh, they're pretty dazzling. So uh, you won't see that from me I, unless someone you know picks it up and plops it on my my blade. It's it's not going to happen. So Rangers are coming up on the schedule. Have you and Brendan uh, texted? Uh, is that a normal routine? Does, does the trash talk and chirping uh, go on when when Riley and Brendan are uh, coming up with a game? I mean, uh, you guys see me every day. I'm a I'm a trash uh, talker. Yes, so, yes, uh, yes. Uh, right there. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I have a close relationship with uh, Brendan. We talk pretty often. Um, it doesn't get too heated on the ice against them, but it, but it's nice to be able to play against them, and, and it's nice to have our families being able to come in town and enjoy it with us. Um, usually the night before, we'll grab dinner with them or something like that. Yeah, does it kind of lose, I guess, the trash-talking edge now that you guys have been through it a couple times? You know, this is obviously isn't your first rodeo playing each other. You have some experience at this point. Yeah, the first couple times, um, it was pretty surreal, and I guess there was a little bit of jarring. Um and then, you know, uh, I played Brennan one year in the playoffs when I was in Boston. And that was probably like the height of the, you know, competitiveness. Um, and it was, it was really cool to, to go through that, um, that, that, you know, that, that whole process with him and, and being able to both, you know, kind of live a, a dream come true and play in the Stanley Cup finals and then do it against each other. Um, you know, one team has to lose. Unfortunately, it was him. But, um, it was really fun, and, uh, you know, hopefully we can do that again sometime. Yeah, the series where he, uh, he played the Bruins, you guys, was that the series he tried to fight Zdeno Chara, was that a different time? I think it was that series. It was either that series or one of the regular season games. Um, I don't think he was really trying to fight Zdeno Chara. Um, I just didn't think he wanted to, like, back down. But obviously it's not a good, you know, <laughs> idea to go anywhere near that guy. And he knows that, too. It's just heat of the moment, I guess. Well, let's shift a little bit. Uh, you've been obviously one of the most active uh, players kind of in the community. I remember actually one of the first times I met you was out at uh, one of the rides for uh, for the fallen military. I don't remember exactly the, the name of the, the organization first year, but but that's something that's obviously very important to you. I guess maybe explain why you've you know felt that you wanted to, uh, to be so active in the community that way. Um, I think this community is, is really special. Um, they really embraced us when, when we came into town. And, um, I think as my career has progressed, I've really noticed the, um, the ability we as professional athletes can, can implement and, and help the community. And, um, we have such a great influence and, um, I think in just the last few years, really starting to realize how easy it is to give back and, and how appreciative people are about it. So, um, there's a lot of people in this community and, and all over the country and in Canada as well that can be helped from hockey players just reaching out. And um, it does make a big difference. So, Yeah, one of the more recent things you did was the, the charity softball game this summer at Las Vegas Ballpark. Uh, how much fun was it to be in that stadium and uh, get to play? It was awesome. Uh, you know, hopefully we can do it again this year. Um, that's the goal is to, to do it annually. But, um, you know, big thanks to teammates that came out and, um, some of the Las Vegas celebrities and the, uh, the Oakland Raiders who showed up because they really helped make it a great event and, and do it for a great cause. So, um, you know, it, it was nice having such a great fan base, I, you know, Vegas gold night cheers throughout the whole game. And, um, it's great to see that even in the summer, it seemed like uh, this community wanted hockey when the, uh, you know, it wasn't around for the couple months this summer, but. 
Um, it was great to see their, their year long support. So like I said, hopefully we can do it again. Um, I think a lot of people really enjoyed it and, and it's for a great cause. Okay. So who had the best swing on the team? Like who were you most impressed with? I don't want to give it to him, but I was kind of impressed by Marchie. Um, I think he had as many home runs as Jose Canseco. So, um, didn't see that out of the little guy. Neither. I didn't no, either. I really didn't. I, I figured he'd be one of those like single athlete type of guys. Um, but he, he mentioned that he played a lot of baseball growing up. Um, but you know, he says he's, he does a lot of things. He says he's good at everything. So I, uh, I figured that was just him trash talking, but it was good to see. Um, he definitely won that home run derby for us. Yeah. Who had the worst swing? Who do you never want to see taken at bat for your team again? Uh, Shea Theodore, maybe, um, him or, uh, William Carlson. I mean, I, I wasn't they don't have baseball in Sweden. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Carl just like, he, he just seemed like he was on a different planet that day. There wasn't a lot of hustle in his game. I think he was like jogging to first base a lot of the time. So you even had Eric Halla hustling in that game. I know. So I, what's Carlson's excuse? I don't know. It was the summer. I thought yeah. I was going to say, you got until next summer and get, get, get him to work on it. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, that was, that was cool seeing Halla hit a inside the park home run. Um, I think he almost gave our trainers a couple heart attacks um, when he was coming around third base there, but uh, he enjoyed it. Uh, I think that was the, the hardest he ran in probably eight or nine months. So uh, that was pretty cool to see. Yeah, you and your brother, Brendan, also handed out, I believe it was 50 sets of equipment to a bunch of uh, youth players later in the summer in August. Uh, just how did that come about and what was that like? Uh, that, was, that was a really cool experience. Um, the NHLPA uh, helps with these great programs that can um, give the opportunity for, for players to, to give back sets of equipment to, um, minor hockey associations. And we decided to do one, um, where we spent our summers in, in Nova Scotia. Um, and it was just, you know, a lot of deserving families. Um, it was nice to, to give them that. And, uh, obviously the kids really enjoyed it and they had a lot of fun. So, um, you know, hockey equipment can be expensive and, um, Hockey's not a cheap sport to play, so uh, every kid deserves the opportunity to be able to do that, and uh, it was a good way to be able to give back to the community. So for you personally, a little bit, are you kind of like a music guy? Do you have a song or, or something that you play before a game? Uh, not really. I'm kind of pretty bland, I guess, like top 40. Uh, maybe I should start listening to something else. I don't know. I pretty much listen to whatever Eeks put on in the... Uh, I hear Mer and Merrill is like a big music guy too. Yeah. Johnny. Uh, yeah, he's, uh, he likes everything though. Johnny's just, you know, he's easy going, whatever you put on, he'll be singing to it. Is there a TV show you're binging right now? Binging right now. Uh, Jack Ryan. Um, it's a show on Amazon prime. I mean, just John Krasinski Jim yeah. from the office is yeah. really glowed up. Yeah. And it, it's tough to see him in, in a different light. I don't know. He's not that believable. Um, <laughs> keep waiting for Dwight to, to pop on screen in the background somewhere. But, uh, it's, it's a pretty cool show. It's, uh, we spend so much time on the road and on planes. So I feel like I go through shows and movies pretty quick. So I'm always looking for, for something. Okay. So do you have like a go-to movie then as well, as well? Go-to movie. Um, I like a lot of comedy. So a lot of Will Ferrell movies. Um, bum, bum, bum. but like I said, I go through a lot of them. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm pretty caught up at everything that's, uh, that's new. Is, is that something that kind of, we don't know about hockey players that, you know, all that, the travel time you're able to, uh, catch up on the Netflix and all the Amazon stuff and all that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's either you're, you're watching a lot of movies, or you're playing cards. So, uh, I stay away from the card tables. So I, I'm, I'm a movie guy. <laughs> Smart. Nice. Uh, if you weren't playing hockey, what do you think you'd be doing? I am probably lacrosse or something uh it's, it's a tough question because i've spent so much time um with hockey and lacrosse growing up it's it's been pretty much everything i've done outside of school so um you know i went to school for for business management and um but that was kind of a minor behind hockey to be honest so uh 
it was nice going through the the whole college experience and I know it helped my um my hockey game um just having those extra times but you know the, the school is important and um so I guess maybe something along business management I, I'm still a year out from graduating so uh, chipping away at that obviously you've still got a long playing career ahead of you but have you thought about afterward uh coaching management type stuff does that interest you maybe <laughs> yeah it does um you spend so much time around the rink and you start to learn so many ins and outs of the game, um, not just playing, but, but everything around it. And, um, I think after I'm done, I'd like to be able to, to give back in, in some type of coaching or, or player development. Um, hopefully I'm picking up something in this game, you know, you spend so much time doing it. So, uh, the game is always evolving. Um, but I think when you're playing and you're trying to be a student of the game, you pick up a lot of things and a lot of different trends and, um, so, you know, hopefully that's something I could do after. Yeah. Um, get, I guess back to more hockey questions, you and William Carlson, obviously you skate together five on five, you skate together on the penalty kill. I guess what helps you guys read off each other so well? Cause it seems no matter how many guys are on the ice, you guys know where you're going to be. I, I can't take a lot of credit for this. I think he, he just, he sees the ice incredibly well. Um, it's been a treat to be able to play with him. Uh, it was the third year in Vegas. Um, it was definitely a huge deal being able to get him from Columbus um, because obviously he was underutilized there. But uh, he's, been, uh, he's been great for, for me to be able to play with. He, he sees the ice incredibly well. He's a great passer. Um, he skates like the wind, and um, it seems like he's always open. I don't know how he does it, but every time I, I look over my shoulder, he, he's there and wide open. So, uh you know, hopefully this chemistry continues and we were able to play each other, uh, play with each other for a long time here in Vegas. We talked about a little bit at the start and obviously you guys are struggling, but just kind of going forward in terms of style, what do you, what do you want to see from, from this team going forward? What do you think maybe is the best way for you guys to go about winning games, I guess, in terms of a style? Uh, I think we have to be just like a little bit grittier. You know, I think our game right now, we're in the, the right places, but we're, we don't have the awareness with our, our stick on the ice or, or just like little things that are, are costing us right now. And, um, you know, it's easy to, to watch a video and, and say, you know, I, I should have had my stick here. Or I should have done this better. But it seems like when you're working hard and, and playing smart, the puck kind of just finds you. And um, I think that's just what we need to get back to right now is simplifying our game a little bit and playing a little bit harder and a little bit grittier kind of making your own breaks a little bit yeah exactly you know the, the puck will find you if you're in the right place yeah carlson used an interesting word today he said pesky once you guys like start playing pesky again i mean do you agree with that and i guess how does one play pesky out there on the ice yeah i don't even know if he knows what that means but <laughs> um you know we, we pesky i guess you know that's pretty optimistic you know it seems like uh a lot of teams say that and it means you know you're you're kind of just coming from behind and finding ways to win and you know that's what we have to do right now is just to find ways to win but i think the best way we can do that is just through work ethic and and playing a little bit harder well i think that's all we got riley uh thank you so much for joining us we really appreciate it yep thanks for having me guys Awesome. Well, that was Riley Smith. I'm Ben Goats. That's Dave Shane of the Las Vegas Review Journal. Thank you so much for tuning into the Golden Edge podcast. We'll talk to you again real soon.